Dreadnoughtus. In this episode, the animal is represented as a lecking and or harem species. A herd of Dreadnoughtus migrate to a salt flat. The females congregate in groups to watch males display to one another and to them. The Dreadnoughtus here are decked out in lots of muscle and fat. They are healthy animals. The weirdest and coolest thing here is the mating display, which consists of inflatable sacks along the neck, as well as a brutish wrestling match. Bronto Smash A lot of the soft tissues in this show are influenced by the fossil record as well as inferences from modern animals. But there is of course some speculation thrown in as well. A lot more speculation is used when it comes to reconstructing behaviors, but none of these behaviors are purely made up. All of them are seen in many different groups of modern animals. These behaviors are seen across many different groups that vary in metabolisms, intelligence, and evolution. So showing them here in some extinct forms of animals is not implausible, nor impossible. The lecking thing is unknown in just about any extinct animal. It is behavior. How could it fossilize? The makers wanted to show how lecking might work in sauropods, and since the sauropod dinosaurs lasted from the late Triassic to the very end of the Cretaceous period, I don't see why it would be implausible that at least one species developed such a behavior. Their inflatable neck balls are another itty bit of speculation. The sauropod dinosaurs had a labyrinthine system of air sacs throughout their bodies. They were attached to the lungs and invaded the spinal column, all the way to the tip of the tail and base of the skull. Here, the researchers on board the series have implied that perhaps these air sacs connected to gular sacs of the throat in a similar fashion to the living greater sage grouse, and voila, inflatable air sacs. Some nitpickers have pointed out that it would be weird for the sacs to inflate first from the head down to the base of the neck as gular display structures in living species inflate upon exhalation. So they should inflate from the lungs up, not the head down. Eh. Some have also remarked upon the facial expressions of the beasts as they tussle, but I don't really see it as anything other than their mouths slightly opening and closing as they breathe. Dreadnoughtus is reconstructed with a thumb claw on the hand. The thing is that the hand bones are largely fragmentary in both Dreadnoughtus specimens. They lack the parts of the hand where the thumb would be. In general, most titanosaurs lost their thumb claw and thumb. However, Diamantinosaurus, a titanosaur from Australia, was found with a thumb and thumb claw. A few other thumb claws are known or suspected from fragmentary or otherwise controversial late Jurassic and early Cretaceous forms. So the presence of it here in prehistoric planets Dreadnoughtus is entirely possible, but more on the speculative side. Could they rear? Yep. Only a little bit of research has been done on how likely it was for massive sauropods to rear up on their hind limbs. It was proposed all the way back in the early 1900s by racist eugenicist Henry Fairfield Osborne, stay mad chuds, where the sauropod would use its tail as a prop or third leg. The conjecture was even used as a basis for the Barasaurus skeletal mount at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. A 2005 paper hypothesized that you would find stress fractures in the forelimbs if sauropods were rearing up on their hind limbs, but none were found. A 2009 study by Heinrich Malison found that diplodocid sauropods, uropatosaurs, dicreosaurs, and diplodocids were the most adapted to rearing of all the sauropods, and even better adapted for it than elephants. They have their center of gravity right over their hips, had the most mobile necks, a well-muscled pelvis and tail, and tail vertebrae shaped to bear the brunt of heavy loads. The same study found that titanosaurs were not so well adapted, and brachiosaurs were likely entirely incapable due to a wonky center of gravity. That seems to rule out Dreadnoughtus as a rearer, but we're not done. Dr. Darren Nash has pointed out that it should be possible, due to their wide hips, agility, strong leg muscles, and muscular tails. Considering the fighting males only rear for a very short time, I find it to be pretty plausible and possible. 
Plenty of animals alive today do things they aren't specifically adapted for, and sometimes stuff that even causes pain, and yet they still do it, live from it, and continue to do it without evolutionary consequences. I personally find it odd that the one that fell over and lost seemed to have just died. If they can rear, bite, and batter each other, I don't see why lightly flopping over in defeat would be enough to crush the ribcage and die. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.